investors uh, from uh, the 2000s um, onwards. Uh, just briefly, the, the major players, the major uh, Japanese uh, corporations, some of them are, are known to us, um, but these are the, 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 the most internationalized Japanese firms, the most important um, companies also within uh, the Japanese uh, uh, economy. The uh, trading firms, the Sogo Shosha, uh, general trading firms, uh, that's Sumitomo, it's Mitsubishi, it's Mitsui, it's Matsushita, Marubeni, Tochu, um, Toyota, Toyota uh, as well. They've been the principal <coughs> drivers of um, uh, investment uh, into the African um, uh, economy. It's mostly been about resource um, extraction. So, uh, if, in other words, um, investing in order to, investing especially in mines, investing in order to gain access to, to resources, minerals, metals, um, and uh, so forth, uh, in order to serve uh, um, the industrial needs and to, to, to align with the industrial structure of um, the Japanese economy, um, uh, Japan being a resource uh, poor. Uh, country. So, investment is conditioned by geostrategic um, uh, interests. Um, so, in the main one can say that uh, FDI by Japan into Africa has mainly been resource and energy um, seeking. South Africa is an, an anomaly, uh, it's anomalous. I'll expand a little bit uh, on that uh, a little bit um, later because the patterns and, and motivations for FDI by Japan um, have been different. It's, uh, it's been uh, also, strategic asset seeking, for example, with um, uh, uh, Kansai Paint um, that acquired uh, Plascon a number of years ago. It's been efficiency seeking, um, uh, it's been market seeking. One can look back to 2000 when Toyota Motor Corporation bought um, the um, acquired Toyota South Africa uh, and to build an export plat platform for Toyota. Uh, Toyota production into the rest of the African um, economy. So, so that's been uh, different in the case um, of um, South Africa. Um, but it's also been, um, as I've uh, indicated, uh, reflective of uh, strategic um, uh, specializations. Uh, the big players, the, the uh, large uh, corporations, Marubi, uh, Mitsui, etc., Mitsubishi especially, have developed over the years um, certain firm resources which enable them to um, develop uh, this um, deep presence, or to deepen their presence uh, in uh, the African economy. So just some examples of um, major uh, activities, as, as you can see, outside of South Africa, um, in, uh, mainly in um, resources uh, and, and mining. And then a um, uh, different picture um, arises when one uh, zoom, zoom in on uh, South Africa, uh, different um, types of uh, uh, FDI, different types of engagements, uh, and, and a, a spectrum of economic um, sectors that um, uh, are that Japanese corporations are active in. So um, there have been some substantive changes um, in terms of investments in, in recent times. Four key points um, to uh, highlight: changing investor attitude. Africa is regarded as a promising invest, investment terrain um, by Japanese corporations, um, even though, though they are still very uh, risk uh, averse. Diversification of involvement um, uh, by sector, so um, uh, companies are not only investing in Africa uh, for resources uh, in mining, but also a, a larger spectrum of economic uh, sectors uh, are now of interest, ICT, construction, manufacturing, uh, power generation, services. Um, uh, diversification also about the type of corporation or firm that's entering um, Africa from the big players, the sort of social and uh, the mid species of the world, um, to small and medium um, enterprises. And the mode of um, investment is also changing. In terms of the mode of investment in the past, um, uh, the, the uh, entry into Africa has been um, cautious, risk averse, as, as I've, I've noted. Uh, uh, joint ventures um, uh, with uh, local partners or external partners uh, was mainly was the principal kind of uh, uh, entry by Japanese uh, corporations, franchising um, and licensing. What is emerging is um, different now, pattern of uh, direct investment, uh, uh, fuller exposure to, to African economies and African volatilities. 
uh, the establishment of uh, subsidiaries, uh, Japanese subsidiaries uh, on the African continent, mergers and acquisitions. I've made the example of uh, Kansai Paint uh, acquiring uh, Plascon. Um, other example of uh, NT2, NTT, um, uh, which acquired, uh, I mentioned, data. And then uh, a strategy of, of go together, um, which is really a pattern of um, uh, investment that Japanese firms um, have followed uh, for much of the 20th century, not only in Africa, but uh, as, elsewhere in the world. So trying to optimize um, uh, backward and forward linkages uh, in a particular uh, uh, industry or a particular economic sector, as an example, uh, in the automotive uh, uh, industry, um, uh, which is uh, of importance for uh, uh, Japanese corporations, um, a steel company might, might decide to, to come and invest um, in um, Africa or South Africa, and then coming together with the steel company would be um, a, an assortment of ancillary companies or related companies, rubber, chemicals, um, paint, um, and uh, so forth. So one can see a shift away from resource-seeking FDI by Japanese companies to a blend of strategic asset-seeking uh, and efficiency-seeking um, um, uh, investments. So the question is what under, underpins this? A uh, number of factors. Um, the Africa rising discourse, um, uh, which is now less risen, it's a bit more inflated. Um, the TCAP process, which um, had over the years developed a much stronger business agenda and a business friendly agenda, and uh, that has started to structure Japanese corporate interests in Africa. And then also the China factor. Um, so uh, uh, the China factor um, having an impact in terms of Japan's economic prospects domestically in Japan as well as within Asia, but then also the China factor in terms of the loss of the potential loss of market um, uh, within um, Africa. So that's been a motivation for uh, Japanese corporations to be, to be, much, to be more assertive um, 